Okay, before I get started, I, I just want to say I'm, I know, I know I'm kind of a couple of days behind with, with the SmackDown review, but, but with that being said, why don't we just dive right into this now, shall we? Alright, so the show kicked off this week from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, LSU country. And you get the, you get the World Heavyweight Champion Sheamus in for a promo. He talks about why he attacked ADR after he became number one contender. And then they, they show the clip of the last week's SmackDown where he became the number one contender. And he just talking about this, that, and the other thing. And then we get my boy David Otunga out. Uh, comes down to the ring. He he comes down the ring and he they they showed that clip from a couple weeks ago on Raw where Sheamus was running out of the ring. And he ran over Johnny Ace and Otunga, Otunga basically he ordered Sheamus to apologize, not just to him but to John Laurinaitis himself. And then he and Otunga came up with a nice came up with a nice statement. He goes, "You may be Sheamus, you may be the whitest, but you sure ain't the brightest." <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Then, then ADR comes out there and and he says that Johnny Ace has, has allowed him to pick, pick Sheamus as his opponent tonight. And Sheamus's reaction to that was to give Otunga the brogue kick. Well, it's alright segment so tie, tied into the at least to the one hour main event so oh well. It was, it was okay I guess. And then next, we get the long-awaited return of Sin Cara. No more springboard for you, brother. I guess I can't can't have him botching like he did at Survivor Series. <laughs> oh, lordy. Well, if you want to get him over right quick, put him up against the Wendy's poster boy himself, Heath Slater. Well, the match... Not much to say about the match. It was only about two and a half minutes. Heath Slater doesn't deserve to be on television because he fucking sucks. Sin Cara wins. Next. Alright, then we come back from commercial and we see Big Zeke in the ring. So, what does that tell you? That he tells me he's probably doing a job. And, Lord, and lo and behold, hallelujah, hallelujah. We get, we get Damien Sandow out there. Oh, God. He is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters. I tell you what. Well, this would be, this would be a, recurring, a recurring theme through most of the show. Another squash. This match only lasted about a minute and a half. It's like, how far is Big Zeke falling? Jeez. But, I, I, would like, I would like to see down the line, maybe Sandow gets a shot at the IC title. Hmm. Because he, he's a really entertaining character. I'm really getting behind him, so. Next. Then they showed a backstage check in with ADR and Ricardo Rodriguez. And Dolph Ziggler enters, enters in there. And basically we find out who Sheamus' opponent is going to be. It's going to be Dolph Ziggler. So, otherwise there's not much to say about this segment. It just, just sets up the one hour, basically the one hour main event. And again, while they, while they lead into the commercial after, after the ADR, Ziggler and... Regardless segment, Ryback coming up next, and they're really they are really harping on those because they're, I guess they're Vince McMahon's pushing him to the moon maybe, mm -hmm. but but anyway they're making it look like it's must see television. I mean don't don't miss this. So anyway it's it's another it's another clone of the two is greater than one tag team. Ryan Shelton and Chris Lyons, who, or whoever the hell they are, but anyway, another another big squash for for Ryback. And it, it's kind of kind of funny the promo that the, that the two jobbers did. We're saying roll tide roll roll tide roll. Wow, it's probably not the best thing to say in, in LSU country, and especially not down. Especially not down in certain parts of Alabama. Especially if you're an Auburn fan. War Eagle, baby. 
And then we get to the one hour main event, which, which was set up a couple segments ago. Sheamus against Dolph Ziggler. You hear, you hear Vicky saying, excuse me, excuse me, blah, 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 got it. Her, God, her voice is great on my nerves to no end, but the thing I thought that was interesting about this is that Ziggler comes out, he's he's marching to the ring, he means business, he he just snatches the mic from, from Vicky and maybe, maybe they're gonna, maybe he's gonna split up from both her and Swagger? Hmm. Anyway, this is actually an okay match. Sheamus goes over thanks to the botched interference by by Jack Swagger. So, God, could they re could they really have a breakup here between Swagger and Ziggler? And maybe have a match at No Way Out. Just saying here. And then you had a backstage interview with CM Punk talking about different nicknames and whatnot, like with Kane, the Devil's favorite demon, the Big Red Monster. Oh. I don't have one nickname. Or he only has one nickname. That's best in the world. Then, then you see Titus O'Neil and Darren Young in the ring. No no entrance music. Which just basically tells you they're doing, doing the job. But they did get an old school promo talking about millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars. Well, they, they took on Santino and Zack Ryder. Um, matches Eh. This match, it only lasted about a couple minutes. Not much to say about this. But then afterwards, the Big Show appears and he continues his path of destruction that he started up last Monday night on Sm or on Raw, I mean. And I think I think um, he got the steps involved where he... <laughs> I think he must have channeled his inner Big Papa Pump or something on Santino Morello because... He, he laid him laid Santino on the steps and he looked like he's doing the Steiner recliner on him, but but yeah he he just basically laid waste to both of them. So then backstage they show probably the hottest crazy chick I've ever seen in AJ, and she runs into Daniel Bryan, and he just basically says. I don't care. I don't care what you do, but neither does CM Punk. So, so I'm almost kind of an awkward segment, if you ask me. <laughs> and since Cody Rhodes sat in on commentary on Christian's my, uh, match last week, so so I guess, I guess Christian has to do the same with Cody Rhodes wrestling Tyson Kid, in keeping with the theme of the show this week for the most part. Now they're, about, now they're about a two minute squash. Cody Rhodes wins and not much to say about this match either. Alright, and then you get to the main event which is for the WWE Championship. First time it's been def defended on SmackDown in over four years. CM Punk versus Kane. Mm. This is actually a pretty decent match. It's about the only match on the, on the show that got plenty of time. About mid about midway through, AJ comes down to the ring. Then Daniel Bryan comes down to the ringside, and AJ alerts Punk to it. Um, ended up being a double DQ because Daniel Bryan ended up missile drop kicking both Punk and Punk and Kane, and and afterwards it brings out Johnny Ace, and he ends up making a triple threat for the pay per view No Way Out. So. It's kind of, I kind of thought that's where they were going to go with this, and that's exactly where they went. Okay, my final thoughts on this show. Mm. I mean, the, the Sheamus Ziggler match was okay, and the, and the Punk Kane match was all right until the double DQ finish. But other than that, it almost looked like an old old superstar show from like the late '80s, early '90s, when when basically all you had was a bunch of squash matches, and that's about what you had. I mean. Yeah, there's, this wasn't much to write home about this show, for the most part. But anyway, let me know what you thought down below. And this is Mark, Marvelous Mark signing off for now. Since 2010, we've been entertaining ourselves while you watch us. Good night, everybody.